Hey, what's going on? My name is Chris Abbott, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about how to use YouTube to promote your church, and I'll actually share with you a secret strategy that I accidentally stumbled upon at my church that ended up bringing in a ton of new families coming up. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. My name is Chris Abbott and I've helped thousands of churches attract thousands of brand new visitors using social media and technology. So in this video, we want to break down some best practices for YouTube and a couple of strategies that you can use to actually use YouTube to promote your church and attract new visitors. Let's dive in. Okay, so the reason we're talking about YouTube right now is because YouTube is actually growing at twice the rate of Facebook. And YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world behind only Google. And oh, by the way, it's owned by Google, right? So YouTube videos now show up in Google search results. So the best thing about YouTube is that it's a search engine. It's actually larger than Yahoo, Bing, and every other search engine combined, second only to Google. What makes YouTube different from all the other type of social medias is that it's a search engine, right? So with Facebook or Instagram or TikTok or Twitter or any other type of social media platform, whenever you post on there, even if your content goes viral, it sees a big spike for like the first one, two, maybe three days, and then it basically dies, right? There's not a single piece of viral content on there that still lives past a couple of days. But on YouTube, it's the exact opposite. In fact, on YouTube, because it's a search engine, the longer your content is on YouTube, the more it gets found and the more YouTube starts to show it to more people. So let's dive in. Let's talk about how you can use YouTube, promote your church and a couple of strategies to attract new visitors. All right, number one, uploading sermons. So if you're using YouTube at all right now, you're probably already doing this, right? You actually have a YouTube channel for your church and you're uploading your Sunday sermons every single week. This is a great idea and it's a way to get your content out to more people. If for some reason you're not uploading your sermons to YouTube, you need to start right away, like this week, especially if you're uploading them to something like Vimeo, but not YouTube, stop, right? You don't have to stop doing it to Vimeo, but you definitely need to start doing YouTube because again, YouTube is a search engine. So when people go out there and they start to search for content that's relevant to your sermons, YouTube will actually put your sermons in front of more people and you can reach people all over the world with the gospel, with content and sermons that you've already created simply by uploading your weekly sermon to YouTube. All right, number two, YouTube Live. You can use YouTube Live for two different things. Number one, you can actually live stream your sermon to YouTube Live. And there's a number of different platforms out there that can actually help you with this. It's really simple, but this is a great way to get in front of more people and to use YouTube. And then the best part is you don't have to upload it. It already lives on YouTube after you're live. The other way that you might wanna use YouTube Live is the same way you might use a Facebook or an Instagram Live. So you might even just wanna go behind the scenes, do an interview with maybe one of the speakers at your marriage event or your women's event or anything like that. So just going live on YouTube YouTube is just another great way to be able to create more content and get in front of more people, promote your church on YouTube. Number three is a virtual tour of your church. Now, this one's a lot of fun. You can literally just take people from the parking lot to your lobby all the way through your church. Make sure to show them your kids' areas and maybe what a worship service looks like. So we actually did this at my church and it just absolutely exploded. So what we did is we just grabbed a friendly person, right? Katie, who normally does a lot of our video announcements and is great on camera. And we started her in the parking lot just saying like, hey, what's up? My name is Katie. I wanna show you what you can expect when you show up to Guts Church for the very first time, right? So we started right in the visitor park and said, hey, when you pull in, you're gonna pull right over here underneath the big red Guts letters and you're gonna find a visitor parking spot and then let's head inside, right? And so literally we just walked and followed Katie all the way through the entire church. So from the time that they pulled into the parking lot, where to park in the guest parking, which doors to come in, right? And we even staged it so we had friendly greeters like waiting there, waving as we came in. We strategically shot this on a Sunday morning so that we would already have people in church and we could kind of go through, right? So this way we're taking them through the hallways saying, hey, when you first get here, you're gonna wanna go this way, don't go this way, right? Come down the hallway. Here's where our kids check-in is, right? Here's all of kids' classrooms. Uh, man, if you're like me and you need a cup of coffee, here's our coffee bar, right? And we literally just gave a virtual tour of the entire church. And then we even grabbed some B-roll that we had of some of the kids' services and put that in there. So that way they could see, okay, this is where you're gonna check your kids in. These are where the bathrooms are. Here's where the kids' classrooms are. And then we showed people what a couple of kids' services look like at some of our different age groups, right? Again, just a great way for parents to be able to see and kind of preview what a kid's service looks like before they ever visit so they know what their kids' can expect. And by seeing it, now they know what great care you're going to be able to take care of their kids. 
All right, number four, plan your visit video. Now, if you guys aren't using Plan Your Visit, we don't have a lot of time to go into it in this video, but we've got plenty of other videos that cover Plan Your Visit, but it's essentially this. It's the idea of giving people the opportunity to sign up and schedule a visit to visit your church, uploading it to YouTube and then putting it on your website as well. This is just a great way to kind of explain the Plan Your Visit option, right? 30 to 60 seconds, just explaining what it's like and how you can plan to visit the church and then what you can expect when you show up. We actually launched this on Easter Sunday back in 2017 at my church and the plan your visit model absolutely exploded our church. Then we maxed out our overflow sanctuary and our kids building ended up having three times the amount of people it was legally allowed to have. We literally had to shut down our kids check in. So on Easter Sunday, we didn't have any more room in our main sanctuary, in our overflow sanctuary or in our kids building. We had about a thousand people who were actually stuck outside the church on Easter Sunday. So that was in April. The very next month in May, using the Plan your visit model, we were able to increase our first time visitors by 42% in May, 60% in June, 87% in July, and 113% in August. If you're not using Plan your visit right now, I encourage you to start. It's really powerful and it helps eliminate the anxieties that new visitors have before they visit for the very first time. And before I get to my last couple of points here, I want to encourage you to subscribe and hit the notifications button. That way you get notified every single time that we drop a new video. We've got fresh content coming out and we've got a ton of new videos specifically on the Plan Your Visit framework. So hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single one. All right, number five, sermon series promos. Now you're probably already creating these anyway. You've probably got some type of a sermon series bumper video or an intro. All you want to do is just take that content that you're already creating and upload it to YouTube. This is just a fun, engaging way for someone who stumbles across your channel and is thinking about maybe checking out your church to see what you guys are all about and see some of the sermon series content that you guys put out there every single week. Number six, event recaps. Now again, if you guys are anything like my church, you guys probably already create event recap videos for like Easter, your fall festival, Christmas Eve, those types of things. So anytime you have an event recap video that you show in service or you put on social media, just make sure to upload it to YouTube as well. Again, this is just gonna help any potential visitors get kind of a good 30,000 foot view of your church as they're scrolling through your YouTube videos and they have a chance to see all of the events and the event recap videos that you're already producing. And finally, Number seven is YouTube ads. Now, there's not a lot of churches talking about this or a lot of people doing this, but I actually started doing this at my church and we were shocked at the results, right? So if you know anything about me, you know I talk a lot about Facebook ads for churches. And when we started this at my church, we'd been running Facebook ads for a couple of years and things were working really, really well, right? We were sending them to a landing page where people could plan a visit on the church website. And so I decided just to experiment for two months, what would happen if we ran YouTube ads instead of Facebook ads? So so we tried it and it worked really, really well. While YouTube ads didn't work quite as much as Facebook ads, we probably had a few less plan your visits every single week. There wasn't that much of a difference, right? So this is a great way to kind of supplement, especially if you're already running Facebook ads or if you kind of want to pour gasoline on the bonfire a little bit, you can also try running targeted YouTube ads. The great thing is you can also geo-target meaning you can literally just target people who live within driving distance of your church. Now, if you want a little bit more of an advanced strategy, here's what I found at my church worked best, right? We would actually run Facebook ads to everyone who lived within driving distance of the church. This takes a little bit longer to set up, but it is fire right? Facebook ads to your landing page and then run retargeting ads to every single person who's been to your plan your visit page and didn't plan their visit. And then you can retarget them on YouTube with your YouTube plan your visit video. All right. So if you like this video and you're looking for more tips on how to attract new visitors and use social media in your church marketing, go check out my video, how to market a church event. We'll see you soon.